to the people of Israel, both Israeli and Palestinians. My love and prayers go out to you guys. But we got to stop fighting and start loving. We got to start living together as, as one people. Just got to stop this fighting. This has gone too far and too long. Start loving. I wake up October 7th and get ready to do some stuff. I figure I'll take a look at the news. Then I hear about Hamas attacked Israel. I was like, okay, no rocket attack. I lived in Israel for three years while I went to school there. Okay, a little, little tip for tap, but this was a little tip for tat this time. As you can see from the clips that I attached together, this, this was the real deal. This was really bad. So I started checking on some friends, making sure everybody was okay. Uh, reached out to one particular friend of mine. He's from IDF. He trains uh, a lot of the IDF special op guys. And, um, I told him this is the worst I've seen in it since I lived in Israel. And he told me it's the, the reason why it's the worst you've seen it is because this is the worst I've seen in non Israel. We have never seen something like this. And seeing the way you saw in the clips earlier that I put together, we've never seen a mosque do stuff like this. This was. But unfortunately, lives are lost. A lot of lives lost, both for Israeli and Palestinian. Right now, the currently, we're at about 200, over 200 Palestinian lives lost, thousands injured. Over 300 Israeli lives lost, thousands injured. Either way you look at it, even if it was one in one, 
a life of life. Shouldn't be any loss. There's a lot of bad history amongst these two groups and it needs to stop. So now, right now, Israel is at war. Because now they're worried about Hezbollah, who is the governing body of Lebanon, up north, getting ready to attack Israel. This is bad. Today, I'll get, I'll get a little bit more into that whole synopsis what's going on. But today, I want to talk to you guys about when chaos happens, when you're on vacation. And we're not just talking about terrorism. We're talking about something as simple as you getting robbed or essay in women's cases. What to do or how to pre prevent or prepare yourself for something like this. For you guys, especially the passport girls or passport sisters, or whatever you want to call yourselves, take note of these tips because these are things you're overlooking, things you're not thinking about, especially when you're going down to Colombia because Colombia is like level three. Be extremely cautious because of the whole scope of being dating, drugging thing going on. Places you guys are going, things are happening. Mexico is another one. So, everybody need to take a pen and notepad out, and everybody need to start prepping their bags up, pre prepping, pre prepping things for when they travel. Because now traveling, it's fun, it's a great experience, but there are dangers in travel. You need to take those dangers seriously because if you're an American, you're going to have a target on yourself. And that's just a reality. Any Westerner going to various portions of the world is going to have a target on them just because they're a Westerner. So grab yourself a pen and paper. I to make an itemized list of things I'm going to say and pay attention. Okay. First place we're going to talk about is country. Know the country you're going to. Know the region of the world you're going to. Because that is going to play an important role. Um, there's any conflicts, anything. Um, be sure you know before you go. That way, if you need to change your plans, you can change your plans. Even know a little bit about the history. You know, go back about a couple of months even a year or two to see what's been going on in that particular country or in that particular region of the world, any conflicts that may not have been totally resolved and you can decide whether you want to go or not. I want to speak on a few issues. I want to speak about these two, two or three particular countries. Um, one is Dubai. Ladies, I don't know where you get in your mind that Dubai is this new flex because some rich Arab dudes are flying you over there so that he can pour the potty on you like a hot little thing. Get it out your head. The Middle East is an ultra-conservative country. I should know that because I lived in the Middle East for three years. Yes, Israel is a Middle Eastern country. Okay? There are standards of how to operate in these countries. You can't really operate in the, as a Westerner. It's going to vary from Middle Eastern country to Middle Eastern country. And even with that, you have to maintain yourself in a particular way. You have to kind of blend yourself into that culture. You can't be an American. Leave America back in America. Either you adopt to the cultures, rules, and regulations of that country, or that's it. You're going to deal with the consequences. Now. This idea of getting flown out to Dubai and getting poo-pooed on and stuff like that, like this, that is stupid. You'll never be married to any of these men because you are beneath them, period. Irregardless of your race. You'll never be the wife of these men. You'll never be rich like these men. 
The women don't over there don't care because they see you as garbage. And they're just letting that men play in garbage. They're going to come back home to the real thing. So those women, that's all with the burkas and stuff, they'll always have the money. You won't. The money you get is like them giving a bum a dollar. And that's what they're doing. Giving the bums a dollar. For you people going to Columbia, y'all need to pay attention to what this whole scope mean thing going on. Pay attention to your drinks. Pay attention to your food. Stop going over there acting like you're rich. Stop dressing like you're rich. Learn what the uh, the locals wear and dress like them. Because you're going to make yourself a target. Learn where the good neighborhoods are, the bad neighbors bad neighborhoods are when I travel I travel like I'm a spy gray man learn learn that terminology learn what the gray man is don't stand out and that's the problem a lot of y'all play American you stand out don't Stop doing that. Because that's when you become a target. Especially in these countries that are hostile. Because a lot of these countries don't like American. They don't like Westerners. And they'll take the opportunity, if they can, to rob you, to mug you, or worse. There are certain countries in Africa, they'll kidnap you. Just because. Same thing in South America. So know the countries before you go. Next thing is know where your local consulate at when you're going on vacation. Um, have that information with you, whether it be on your phone, on a notepad, in your uh, luggage. Know how to get in contact with the local, local consulate. Uh, there is a program by the State Department called the STEP program, which is a Smart Travelers Enrollment Program. Um, it's a great program. It's free to join. Go on to the uh, Department of State website. Um, it's going to give you information on what's going on on your travels. It will help your uh, family members get in contact with you. And just a wonderful program to get involved. I do that when I travel overseas. Um, just in case anything happens, like I was going to plan on going to Israel, but with what's going on right now, if I was on my way to Israel or if I was there in Israel, they would have notified me on my phone saying, hey, this is the situation that's going on. Um, you, we'll give you more information on what you need to do. So that way you are safe. So that's what this program is. And a lot of people don't know about it, but these are things that will help you prepare for stuff like that. In situations like that so highly recommend you get part of this program I will put a link on that uh, website that website in the uh, video down below okay uh, I'm gonna show you some tools that I carry just in case things happen like as you can see what's going on in Israel um, with the missile attacks um, there were some power power outages um, sometimes you'll go to places where the services aren't that great internet wise. I have a few little toys I keep with me just as a backup or just in case moment. Uh, we're going to start with this bag. I don't have the name of it. I will put these links in the description of the video. So that's case you guys want to get it, I'm more than happy to get it. Uh, let's start with the bag. This is my knapsack. This is my new knapsack that I'm going to be carrying. It uh, goes up to about 50 liters. And what I like about these bags, and you can get them from Amazon. Matter of fact, you can get a lot of this stuff from Amazon.com. Um, see this? It's a little port. 
it's a uh, has a USB port and there's also an, an another port in there a little round little port on top of that now get it this is the right one yeah. now in here is a little plug now inside that little plug you yeah this is it in this little pouch it's another plug I can take that and plug in this little power pack. Stuff it in here that's dedicated to give me power. So I can plug in my uh, another uh, cord to my phone. And I can just have power coming out through the phone. Because you know when you're in airport, everybody got the their phone charging all plugged up, but I'm a cybersecurity analyst and you gotta kinda of be a little careful of that because sometimes you can get some nasty little malwares and stuff from those plugs and stuff like that. So be a little careful with that. But even with this, having that, your own personal power, you're all good to go. Power up your phone whenever you want to, whenever you need to. Um, so I like to do it this way. So you have your own personal power source on you that you can utilize. And all you have to do is just charge up the, uh, the power pack when it goes down. Now, that being said, that's gonna be dedicated to here. And again, you can get these bags on amazon.com. I'll have another one, another power pack. This is solar power. So that wherever you're at, the power goes out, you can, rely, you can rely on this to charge up. And this has a USB, and I believe this is a USC, if I'm not mistaken. You can charge up additional stuff. Plus it comes with a flashlight, as you can see. You can charge additional stuff. See the blue lights are on. Nice and pretty. You can charge up some additional stuff. So I'm not without power. If I need additional power, I got this. If I need to charge up the other power pack, I'll just hook it up and just charge the additional power pack. I'm good. Um, I have this. Little thing, charge my uh, iWatch, my iPhone, earbuds, all that charged up. Phones up nice and neat. Carry these with me. Um, burner phone, definitely have a burner phone. So, certain countries they like to take the iPhone, especially when you're going out to Colombia, you always have a burner phone. Uh, that way they take your phone, you ain't crying over spilt milk. Uh, this one doesn't have a SIM card, so I highly recommend get one with a SIM card port. Oh, yes, it does. It does have a SIM card. Uh, that's not a SIM card, excuse me. Anyway, get one with a SIM, you can get a SIM card in there, and you can just utilize this as your phone. So, highly recommend you do that. Now, this little thing. This Wi-Fi modem. This is from Locomy. And by the way, none of these or Amazon is sponsoring this video. Get this. This is a Wi-Fi modem. I uh, basically will charge this up before I go. And this will provide me with uh, Wi-Fi service when I need to. If I'm getting ready to head on out, I will... Uh, Contact the service. I'll put money on it. Generally, as you can see, it's starting to light up. And um, it's not going to have anything on it. But I just wanted to show you 
um, the ser various service packages, and that's going to depend on which country you're going to, how much they're offering. Um, it ranges and varies. It could be, I don't know, $10 for 10 gigabytes. Um, it really all depends on where you're going. Oh, gee, I'm going to have to charge you up. Um, we got to update it. Any updates that need to be done? Make sure you get the updates done. So um, that's it. But um, I got to update this thing. Make sure it has all the softwares and stuff on it. But this is my kit that I carry with me in my knapsack, just in case of emergencies. Um, highly recommend you have your own personalized kit that you have just to make sure that you are okay um, when you're going to these uh, countries. Uh, like for example, what happened in Morocco, I know there's some power issues over there in Marrakesh. So if you were there and if you needed to make contact, you, were, you had the ability to use secondary things. So you never know when these disasters will hit. So again, you know, just a backup plan, just in case something would happen, you would have something to uh, your contact family and be able to utilize resources that at your own disposal to make sure that your family knows that you're okay. Okay, for those that will be going to Israel in the future when this madness stop, keep in mind about the buildings that the way they're designing it, each floor is gonna be designed specifically to deal with um, any type of uh, bombs. Like for example, uh, it'll be like a Pacific row that's kind of like a bomb proof row where that, for example, if you're in a hotel and you got assigned to that room, you are mandated to let people in if there's an attack you have to let them in your room to protect them so because that was how it was with me when i was living in the dorms um there's a pacific room on that floor where you are mandated to let these students stay in because that's bomb proof and all our rooms had steel curtains you know that was our normal curtains that we just pull down if we want to go see the sun, but they, they were for blast resistance and stuff like that. Um, I believe that's how the buildings are being constructed now, and plus a lot of the buildings are old bomb shelters, you know, some of them are like old bomb shelters, like I remember when I was like CrossFit Panda, doing CrossFit, that was an old bomb shelter that they had, and um, you'll get quite a bit of some of the buildings that they train in, in uh, some of the old gyms or old martial arts studios. They were old bomb shelters from back in the day and stuff that they renovated and now they're gyms or martial arts studios and stuff like that. So if you're training there, it looks old, yeah, bomb shelter. So, um, but just as a footnote when you're out there, I'm not sure about the glass ones, but the old concrete ones that they're building, they're going to be. Some of them are going to be a little bit more blast resistant. Um, not totally safe, but obviously, but yeah. So with the tools that I just mentioned, those will come in handy if you're in those um, shelters because obviously there's no outlets over there and people are going to be on their phones and it's good to have one of those chargers with you. I will even get a third, a third charger just to keep in your pocket and have it fully charged just in case if you're on your phone and you need a charge, always have a charging cable and a battery pack with you, just in case if you ever get in those situations, because you're gonna be in that shelter for a while. Um, plus, even after the alarm sounds, you may wanna stick around in that shelter because the debris, if they, like one of the missiles from the Iron Dome, um, 
takes out a missile, the debris, those are some big log chunks of debris that's going to be falling from the sky. So you may want to stay in there for a little bit until all the debris gets out of the sky. So that way you don't get hit or hurt, and, you know, get hit with any of that falling debris. So, um, yeah, so keep, you may want to just keep one of those little small pocket uh, power packs with you handy. I want to give a final word on this whole thing. And originally I had something planned to say, I videotaped it, now I'm scrapping it because things are ever so fluid. Some new stuff has come out, so I'm gonna make this my final. So one, this is not the time for rallies, marches, political agendas being pushed. This is a time for prayer, it's a time for unity, it's a time for planning on what we should do to unify and fix Israel. And not just for the Israelis, but the Palestinians. Um, that's what we should be focusing on. Um, I, I, I'm just done with this whole political BS. The mudslinging needs to stop. I'm done. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's blood on both hands, enough to share around, and we can just start digging in everybody's history and just throw mud at each other, but we're not gonna solve anything. So right now, let's address this, and let's bring everybody together. Um, there's definitely gonna be some issues coming up in the minute into this involves to the intelligence and military failures of this of this whole thing. So we just got enough on our plate as it is with that. So let's just let's just kill the noise on that. Um, second thing is, and um, I got I got no agenda. I'm not for or against. I'm very neutral, but um, I will say this to the Israeli government. I got no problems with going into Gaza and just taking that mother over. But I do got a problem with your plans. Shutting off water and starving people. Gaza is a city. And you got innocent women and children living in that city. So I suggest you renege that plan. If going in there full force as it is, that's enough. I am not in to starving kids and women and shutting off power and all that other stuff. That is not cool and I don't condone it. Again, this is not for and against. I understand about what y'all discovered down in that little town. I am equally, equally angry. And I shed tears with you. Me personally, if you focus on just getting the actual Hamas members full fledged, signed up, I'm a full fledged Hamas member or a Hezbollah member, do whatever the hell you want. But not on here. Huh? on the Palestinians. Because what Hamas did in that town, I'll give you the ammunition on my gun locker if you want. Christians, don't you sit on the sidelines just saying, staying silent and not saying a damn word. Because Israel's your country, and I don't care if it's run by Jews. That's totally fine. But my religion comes from Israel as well. So we have a say in this. And we will speak. And we will do. And we will help our Israelis and Palestinian brothers and sisters. Period.
because that is our land as well. So let's cut this nonsense out and let's act human. That's all we ask. We are with you, Israel. We are with you, Palestinians. Peace and love to all of you guys.